the Joe Rogan experience. I got I got an old lady story. When we lived at the <laughs> barracks, there's 14 comedians living in that place in Howard Square. I don't know if you ever came by because no. I was pretty what high was back the then. Barracks? The barracks was an apartment that Mike and I had, and we what opened year was it. This? Oh God, it was. 80s, you know, in the beginning, you know, when, when stand up. So it was up, probably before my day. I yeah, came bef- in in 88. Yeah. Uh, no, was, so 85. And by Mike, you're saying Mike Clark. Yeah, brother. yeah, yeah, right. So we had this house, and it was like three or four bedrooms and Kenny Rogerson's room, which was like a closet with a sheet over. We, re- we refer to it as the sperm room. And Kenny, <laughs> and we had uh, the rent was one hundred sixty five dollars a month. The wow. landlord's name was Wing Wong, and we were working at the Ding Ho for Shun Lee. So one hundred sixty five bucks between sometimes ten guys. We didn't have it. You know, we, we were blowing it. All right. <laughs> so now every comedian who came in from out of town, they didn't have to get a hotel. You just go by the barracks. There was a key under the mat. At the end, there was like eleven keys under the mat. But there was this old lady next door in the third floor apartment and we would rage all night I would break windows I just love the sound of breaking glass we had a window <laughs> guy on call you know because people say it's freezing Lenny oh call the window guy you know I just love to throw things through the glass you know, swing. <laughs> I remember Sweeney ducked and I, I, I put a bottle through the window and he's laying on the floor and I go, Sweeney, what's wrong with you? He goes, well, I'm just having fun. He goes, don't talk down to me. I go, well, you're lying on the floor. Get up. You know. So now <laughs> this woman, she told the woman, she goes, I said, hey, she, I hate you, Lenny Clark. I hate you. I said, listen, I'm going to the store. You want me to get you anything? And she yelled at the top, Lenny Clark, I only live to see you dead, right? And, she, <laughs> and all the neighbors, every neighbor that left me, right, right? Oh, Joe, it gets worse. So now, <laughs> You know, I, I'd send the flowers every now and then, and she'd throw them off the balcony. I don't want your fucking fly. I want you dead. Right? So uh, she ends up uh, getting murdered. Oh, no. Oh, like cut up and like decapitated. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. So, so the cops come to the house one day, and I'm laying in my bed puking in a bucket and Rogerson comes in and he waits he said, did, did you murder the lady next door last time I go no he goes okay you can come in and the, <laughs> <laughs> and the cops come in okay. and, they, and they go Lenny we, no, we, we don't think it was you we gotta ask you questions but where were you last night and they go I don't remember I go but I but I know I got here later and they, and they, they, they worked out I was at the ding and then I hung out we hung out after hours and I don't know where I was but then I get home but you know that woman get, they, I don't think they ever saw the case but it definitely wasn't me because I was too lazy to walk up th- three flights of stairs. We used to we used to have police cars park in her her parking space. She didn't have a car, but we'd have the paddy wagon parked down below. We'd be into them. Oh, it was crazy. So you'd have the cops come over and party with yeah, you. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them got let, thrown off they the ne- force. They never solved. They never solved that case, as far as I know. You know, there was a guy that I used to train with <clears throat> who uh, got arrested. I don't know if you remember this case, but they they were. They took this guy and they were breaking his bones with a hammer and then injecting him with cocaine to keep him awake because he was he was blacking out from the pain. Oh! And they cut his hands off. They cut his head off. They cut everything off. And uh, this dude that I knew got arrested for it. And uh, when I asked him about it, it, he knew something. Like it was one of those things where, like you know, you ask someone, like I go, they arrested you. I go, why would they arrest you? And it was like this. I don't know. I don't know nothing. I was like. Oh, you know something. I was <laughs> yeah. like, holy shit. I was like, oh my God, I might know a fucking serious murderer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He went to jail for something else. I forget what he went to jail. I knew him when I was 16, and he went to jail, and then he came out. And when he came out, like all his tattoos, he had scars all over all of his tattoos. Like, apparently, he tried to burn his tattoos off in the joint. And he was like just a different person. Like, his time in jail, and I guess he was in jail for like maybe a five years from when I knew him. Wow. And he came out five years later and started training again <clears throat> before he got arrested. And um, just super spooky to Did be around somebody that you think might have done that. No, I, I, I know of a few murderers. That, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know at the time when I met them, but yes. over the years I've gone, oh my, well, the, the guy who got the, the pass, Johnny Manorano, he was on 60 Minutes. He shops at Stop and Shop in, in Somerville. And people go, you know who that is? I go, who, Johnny Manorano? He go, hi, Lenny. I went, oh, hey, Johnny. 25 murders. And, and, and you know. How's he out? Uh, deals. You know, I mean, he did time. He did a lot of time. Not but he enough. was on 60. No, no, not 25 murders. Come on, are you kidding <laughs> It me? seems like well, he should be in jail well, forever. Bull. How many did Sammy the Bull kill? And he a was lot. out there. Yeah, he was, he out. was out there in Methan, Arizona. I think he's still out. Uh, yeah, he I is. I think he's out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got no beef for him. But, I don't either. So, 
one of my buddies uh, in high school, his name was Bubba Good. He was the funniest, funniest person I ever met in my life, without a doubt. One day he stole 12 Corvettes, 12 red Corvettes, and lined them up outside. And in one of the Corvettes, there was a briefcase full of cash. And he went in and he bought the entire lunchroom lunch. Lunch is on me. <laughs> <laughs> at high school, right? I mean, lunch is on me. He stole Corvettes yeah. in he high stole, school? He stole Corvettes. Oh, yeah. And he lined them up outside. You know, Jesus Christ. Oh, he was amazing. So he, <laughs> he goes to Jay, he goes to Walpole. You remember Walpole State sure. Prison, okay? So we're doing a show at Walpole. You know, a couple of guys asked me, you come in? Yeah. So they said, Mr. Clark, before you come in, we just want to let you know, if there's any drugs or drug remnants on you, you're not going to be released. And I went, Oh, let me change my clothes. So I changed my clothes and went in and I did the show. And it was really. The, so they would the, swab you? Yeah, it was. Uh, they, they just. Uh, it was, so if they swabbed you and they found Coke on your shirt, you, uh, you're, you stay you're staying. In. Yeah. And they, Jesus. And they explain that. And this is like 35 years ago, right? So, and this was when Walpole was still maximum security. You know, I mean, the, the yeah. worst of the worst. So we go in. And uh, I'm with DJ and a couple of people. DJ Hazard? Yeah, DJ Hazard and I think Sweeney. How's he doing? I don't, I think there was a cancer thing and then he beat that. And oh. but I got stories about, but hey, good guy. Oh my God. Remind me about DJ. I want to finish this. So, so I'm on stage and I'm thinking, hey man, Bubba's in here right there. And he jumps up on stage and I go, Bubba, he goes, how you doing? He goes, I'm in here under an assumed name. I'm in here under Danny. This is 35 years ago. He's in Walpole under an assumed name. I mean, I, could that be? You know, I, well, anyway, he gets out, and then he, he murders some guy, <laughs> and he goes back, and he's in for double life now, two murders. And I said to him, Papa, why'd you kill the guy? He goes, he was talking shit. You know, <laughs> He's just a little bit of a guy, but funny. I mean, he's the type of guy, if, uh, if someone wanted to kick his ass, you could make them laugh so hard you couldn't punch him. He was that funny. And now he's in. He's been in for, I, I want to visit him, but, you know, they said it's not a good idea, but I'm going to go visit him. You know, I'm, I'm uh, old now. But he's been in for, he's been over 30 years now. It's so funny how <clears throat> if you're in the nightclub business, like we are, you're going to run into people along the way that have done some horrible shit. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I knew a guy who sawed a guy's head off. With a saw? I, I think a sword. You know, oh, one Jesus. of those like samurai swords, yeah. and then threw it on the uh, on a guy's lawn. I mean, yeah, yeah. It was there was drugs involved? I mean, Obviously. I remember. <laughs> I remember what it was. It was, it was, it was crack, but crack, oh, yeah. but, but crack before crack. What was the uh, free base? Yeah. Free base wasn't as bad as crack. That was yeah. that was for people with money. <laughs> that was the Richard Pryor days. Okay, Richard so, Pryor was so, in the free so base. The first time I'm I'm free basing at. At like an MBTA station in South Boston, and uh, I think Kennison was yeah Kennison was there, and this, this guy who's, who's who's away for life now too, who remained nameless. But I, I, I took a hit, and I'm um, I'm passing out. I mean, I'm so high I'm passing, out, and all I could hear was, "What are we gonna do with the body?" That was the last thing I heard. <laughs> Whose body? Me. You? Oh, up. if you die? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, they thought so, you were overdosing? Yeah. I thought it was. I, I can't. We, we were smoking that stuff. And you're thinking. And you're, <laughs> I, used to, I used to start my own heart. You know, <laughs> boom. You know, it, it punches out as I can. Oh, God. You know, because when, when I went to, when I finally went to the doctors and had the atrial fibrillation and all the heart mm -hmm. damage they did, they said, well, what do you think it was? Well, you know, maybe the weight, you know, because I was almost 400 pounds. And they go, I go, what about Coke? And they said, well, you had to do an awful lot of coke i said well there's a small mountain in peru that's missing you think it's really that much and i go oh yeah oh yeah <laughs>